it's time to talk about titrations. So I'm going to categorize titrations in two ways. Either we're going to have a strong acid titrated with a strong base, or a strong base titrated with a strong acid. That's one category. Or we're going to have a weak acid titrated with a strong base, or a weak base titrated with a strong acid. That's the second category. I'm splitting these up because the, the calculations uh, are different. They're a bit more involved when we have a weak acid or a weak base titrated with the strong base or strong acid. Um, but, uh, you know, they're still all calculations that you most likely are familiar with at this time if you're in a general chemistry course. So, often we use titrations to determine an amount of acid or base in solution by reacting with the opposite, sort of the base or the acid. Um, and sometimes we'll plot our data uh, where we put pH on our y-axis and volume of titrant on the x-axis and we might get a plot that looks something like that. Um, and so what kinds of things does that tell us? Number one, it can tell us an equivalence point or an endpoint for a titration and from which we can determine uh, a number of things including concentration of titrant, uh, we can sometimes determine the, the identity of an acid or a base. There are many applications of titration. So in terms of uh, the, the terms that I'm going to use with the with titrations um, include the term titrant. So if we're looking at the titration of a strong acid by a strong base, that terminology, the way I've, I've said that is that the strong base is going to be the titrant. It's going to be what is in a burette. Uh, and then the titrand, a term you may see less often, uh, in this case would be the strong acid, and it's what's going to go in an Erlenmeyer flask beneath the, the burette. We are going to add small portions of titrant uh, to the titrand and allow reactions to take place. For the reaction of a strong acid with a strong base, let's say we have our strong acid of hydrochloric acid and our strong base is sodium hydroxide. We know that when these are in solution, they completely dissociate. So we have H plus and Cl minus that's formed from the acid and sodium and hydroxide formed from the base. So if we think about what's really happening in our flask, we're gonna have H plus ions and Cl minus ions. And in our burette, we're gonna have sodium ion and A plus and OH minus hydroxide ion. When we combine the titrant and the titrand, we have a reaction that takes place, and that is the reaction of the H plus and OH minus to form water. So if we have are measuring, for instance, the pH in the titrant, so we could put a pH electrode in there or, uh, and measure its pH, we would see that as the reaction occurs, or as we add volume of titrant, as we add OH minus, the pH doesn't increase very much. It will start to increase slowly, and then all of a sudden we're going to see a sharp increase in pH, and it's going to flatten out again. This is our typical titration curve for the titration of a strong acid with a strong base. So I've redrawn the titration curve here, and I've listed four different points along the titration curve. Uh, and you'll notice we have, again, pH on our y-axis, volume of added base, that's the titran titrant, uh, on the x-axis. So these four parts include number one here. This is before any base is added. I'm going to use OH- minus to represent base because that's the important component that's going to react with the strong acid H+. So in solution, again thinking about what's in the Erlenmeyer flask, okay, here's our burette, 
All right, we're only thinking now about what's going to be in the Erlenmeyer flask. Before any base is added, we have H plus and Cl minus in solution. And the pH then in the flask is going to be dependent on the concentration of the acid itself. Uh, the, we can get the pH from the concentration of H plus in the solution. At point two along the titration curve, we've now added some hydroxide, OH minus. Okay? We've used our burette, we've put hydroxide into that solution, and um, we've allowed the reaction of H plus plus OH minus to occur. We've formed water. And so what happens then is that some hydroxide, or all of the hydroxide, reacts with some H plus. Um, and as you can see from our curve, we still have an acidic pH. That means that there's still H plus present, okay? And all of the hydroxide has reacted with some amount of H plus in solution. So we add OH minus, that OH minus reacts with H plus, and we still have H plus left over. And so the pH is going to be dependent on the concentration of that leftover H plus. So in order to figure out what that is, we will need to set up a reaction table or a BCA table uh, before change, after, to uh, determine um, the amount of H plus left over. At point three, this is the equivalence point. The definition of the equivalence point is that the moles of OH minus added uh, is equal to the starting moles of H plus which is to say we've completely reacted all of the H plus with OH minus that we've added. This reaction occurs to completion and so at the equivalence point we are left with water. So then the pH is e still equal to the concentration or um, proportional to the concentration of H plus in solution but now there's no additional H plus, it's only dependent on the um, auto dissociation of water, which means that the pH at 25 degrees C is equal to seven. This is a neutral solution. Only for the titration of a strong acid with a strong base, or a strong base with a strong acid, will the pH be seven at the equivalence point. It has to be a strong, strong titration at the equivalence point. In those cases, is the pH equal to 7, as long as we're at 25 degrees Celsius. Past the equivalence point, okay, anywhere past point 3, um, we have now added excess hydroxide. And the main component in that solution that's going to affect the pH is the concentration of hydroxide. And so we can get pH typically from cal initially calculating the pOH uh, because that will be dependent on the hydroxide ion concentration um, more directly. Uh, and so it's an easier way to get this pH. Um, but knowing here at, at point four we have excess hydroxide we need to determine how much is in excess, and from that we can then calculate a pH. So let's look at an example. Let's take 15 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl, we put this in a flask, we're going to dilute with 50 mils of water, and then titrate with 0.0964 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, And we want to know at what volume of base added does the equivalence point occur? 
So we know that at the equivalence point, by definition, the moles of base added equals the original concentration of H plus. That is to say, all of the OH minus added reacts with H plus in solution. Okay. So this reaction of H plus plus OH minus forming water occurs to completion. The only thing we have left uh, of major concern is that of water, which then has an equilibrium, but um, yeah. So this is, this is what we need to be worried about here. So our first task is to find the concentration of H plus. We know that uh, for every mole of HCl, we're going to get one mole of H plus because HCl completely dissociates into H plus and Cl minus. So if we start with 0.2 moles per liter of HCl, that solution will contain 0.2 moles per liter of H plus. Um, but we've done a dilution. Okay, so we've taken 15 mils of 0.2 molar HCl and we diluted that with 50 milliliters of water. So we can use the dilution equation, EQN for equation. And then this is M1 V1 equals M2 V2, uh, where M is the molarity, V is the volume. So if we start with 0.2 moles per liter of HCl, and we have 15 milliliters of that, or 0 0.015 liters, we can determine the concentration upon dilution the total volume that we have diluted to is 15 milliliters plus 50 milliliters or, point, or, or 65 milliliters, 0 0.065 liters. So solving for M2, we're going to get a concentration of 0 0.0462 moles per liter. So the next step is then to determine the volume of base required uh, to completely react with the starting concentration of uh, acid. So to determine the volume of base required, we're going to use dimensional analysis. We're going to start with what we know, and that is that we have a concentration of acid of 0 0.0462 moles of H plus per liter, and we have 0 0.065 liters of that solution. We also know, based on this equation, H plus plus OH minus forms H2O, that for every one mole of H plus, we react with one mole of OH minus. From here, we can use the concentration of base to calculate the volume that's required because we know that we're adding 0 0.0964 moles per liter of hydroxide solution. So you'll see that the volume of H plus cancels, moles of H plus cancel, moles of hydroxide cancel, and we're left with liters of hydroxide solution. We multiply and divide all of this out, we'll get 0 0.0312 liters, which is 31.2 liters of sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, but maybe we want to determine the pH before any base is added. All right, so this is the beginning of the titration curve. The only thing that matters is the concentration of H plus in solution. So we need to know the concentration 
of H plus uh, that we start with. And we've already done some of the math for this. We determined using the dilution equation that the concentration of H plus is equal to 0 0.0462 moles per liter. That was on the previous slide. And from that we can de determine the pH because pH is equal to minus log of H plus. So if we take minus the log of 0 0.0462, we're going to end up with a pH of 1.33. Okay, so what if we want to determine the pH when 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide has been added? We've already determined that it requires 31.2 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to reach the equivalence point. So this means that we're in the region before the equivalence point in the titration. So in order to determine the concentration that's left over of H plus after the sodium hydroxide that's been added reacts, we need to use a reaction table, also referred to often as a BCA table. So in a reaction table, we use moles. The reaction that we're concerned about is that of H plus plus OH minus reacting to form H2O. We need then to know moles of H plus that we're starting with, so that's going to be our before line, and we need to know moles of OH minus that have been added from that 15 milliliters. So to find the moles, we're going to multiply the concentration by its volume. Now, in the previous two examples, we, we determined the concentration of HCl uh, in its diluted final volume of, or diluted volume of 65 milliliters. So let's continue with that. Um, you could also find the number of moles of HCl uh, in the 15 milliliters. You're going to get the same value. But to find the moles, we're going to multiply the concentration. So in this case, the concentration of H plus was 0 0.0462 moles per liter. We multiply by the volume, 65 milliliters, and we're going to end up with 0 0.003003 moles of H plus to start. For hydroxide, we, have, we are adding 0 0.015 moles per liter, I'm sorry, 0 0.015 liters of 0 0.0964 moles per liter solution, which gives us a number of moles of 0 0.001446 moles. We're not going to be concerned about the product water in this case. In this case, uh, given our starting moles, our before moles, we can see that the hydroxide is a limiting reagent. That is, there are fewer moles of hydroxide compared to the, o to the H+. This is going to completely react with the H plus, so we're going to subtract 0 0.001446 moles from both, from both the OH minus and the H plus. So the change is minus 0 0.001446. After we do our math here, we're going to end up with zero moles per liter, zero moles, excuse me, of OH minus and 0 0.001557 moles of H plus. Okay. To then determine the pH, pH equals minus the log of the H plus concentration, 
we need to know what the H plus concentration is. We know how many moles we have, 0 0.001557 moles. We need to know the total volume. So the total volume is going to be the volume that we started with of the acid, 0 0.065 liters, and what we added with the sodium hydroxide, uh, that's 15 milliliters or 0 0.015 liters. Uh, and so the ending concentration is 0 0.0195 moles per liter of H+. Therefore, when we calculate the pH, minus the log of 0 0.0195, we'll get a pH of 1.71. If you recall the starting concentration, or sorry, the starting pH of, of the acid before any base was added was 1.33. And so we've increased the pH here slightly. Now, perhaps the most easy question for the titration of a strong acid with a strong base, what is the pH at the equivalence point? We have to assume that we're at 25 degrees Celsius. We know that we've reacted at the equivalence point all of the H plus in solution with the exact same number of moles of OH minus. That's the equivalence point by definition. And so the only thing we're left with in solution is water. We know that water auto dissociates into OH minus and H3O plus. And so this is the only equilibrium that matters at the equivalence point. Because we're at 25 degrees Celsius, the pH is equal to minus the log of the H3O plus concentration, or H plus concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. That is from our Kw, the square root of the Kw, uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Square root of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, so our pH is equal to 7. Okay, so final region uh, to, uh, to calculate the pH of is that beyond the equivalence point. So if we add 10 milliliters of, of sodium hydroxide past the equivalence point, what is then the pH? We have to know, based on how this question is worded, the volume required to reach, of a base required to reach the equivalence point. And that was 31.2 milliliters. So if we're at a volume that is, we've added a volume that is 10 milliliters past the equivalence point, that's the same as saying we've added 41.2 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Again, we're going to set up a BCA table. We're going to use moles. Our starting moles of H plus are the same. Okay, we're assuming that we're starting from like the very beginning of the titration curve. And so the mole, oh, sorry, this is not concentration, this is moles. At the start is 0 0.003003. And then the number of moles of OH minus that we're going to add is the concentration 0 0.0964 times the 41.2 milliliters in liters. So times 0 0.0412 liters. And we'll end up with 0 0.00397 moles. We're going to go back to our BCA table with the reaction H plus plus OH minus forms H2O.
our sturdy moles of H plus, 0 0.003003, our sturdy moles of base, 0 0.00397. We're not going to worry about water. And you can see now that the limiting reagent in this reaction is the H plus. And that's because there are fewer moles present of H plus. So we're going to subtract that limiting reagent, minus 0 0.003003, from both the H plus and the OH minus. And after, we're going to end up with 0 moles of H plus and 0 0.000969 moles of OH minus. We can then calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. We'll take the moles over the total volume. 0 0.000969 moles. The total volume is the 0 0.065 starting acid plus the 0 0.0412 uh, liters of sodium hydroxide that were added during the titration and we'll end up with 0 0.00912 moles per liter for hydroxide. We can then calculate the pOH minus the log of the OH minus concentration. And we'll get 2.04, that's our pOH. We want to know though the pH. The pH is going to be equal to 14 minus the pOH, which is 2.04, which gives us 11.96. So a basic solution, that's great, that's what we were hoping for.